has made a career out of just that. Very importantly, not only has he made a career out of it, but he saved lives through it as well. I'm talking now to Richard Mullender. Richard, let's just go over your background a bit now, because it is absolutely fascinating. Tell me about the work you've done. Well, I was a career CID officer, so I worked for 30 years at Scotland Yard, and the last five of which I spent as a hostage negotiator. And that um, meant that between 2000 and 2000 and 2002 and 2007, I was working on um, cases where Brits had been taken abroad, for instance, and also working um, in suicide interventions, that sort of thing, um, domestic sieges as a hostage negotiator in London. And tell me about some of the, the events that people may have heard about that you were involved in and the people you were involved in rescuing. Um, there was the, well, some of the people, probably the most famous would be someone like Ken Bigley, um, who got killed, unfortunately, Margaret Hassan, and they were very early. And then we had uh, three UN workers got taken in Afghanistan. Uh, was on that case. Uh, Norman Kemba worked on the London end of that case. So uh, any, any kidnap between 2002 and 2007. And we've said there, the session that you, you fronted today was all about listening is a matter of life and death. And people don't listen properly. That's one of the things you say. Listening is a key part of communication and that's something that you teach your clients. Yeah, I think the thing is, is that if you ask someone to do they listen well? Quite a lot of people say they listen well. And then you say to them, OK, then teach me to listen. And, and the moment you ask them to teach you to listen, you realise most of the time they talk about um, keeping eye contact. Well, that's OK, that's looking. Um, or asking questions, which is talking. Or um, summarising, repeating back what the person said, which is more talking. And so actually, no one knows how to listen. And no one knows what to listen for. So how do you put into... In into practice the, the, the years and years of painstaking work you've done in life or death situations in terms of with clients? What sort of things are you advising them? Okay, um, to influence somebody you need to understand the person. The first thing you've got to do is to understand the person you're talking to. And, and in order to be able to do that, you must be able to listen. And therefore you've got to know what to listen for. So I'll be listening for values, beliefs, um, currencies. I'll be listening for uh, their idiosyncrasies. I'll be listening for all sort of levers, um, possible solutions. So listening is, there's a lot going on and, and it's difficult and I think most people think you just sit and listen, well you don't, you know, it's a very active form but it's not what people class as active listening skills. When people talk about active listening, what well, they talk about is someone nodding their head, well nodding your head doesn't help you listen. And again, asking open questions doesn't help you listen. I'm trying you not may... to nod my head while I'm listening. Oh, you... Now, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> but you need to nod your head to keep me talking, but that's what it does, they're really effective skills but not for what they're taught. And so. What I've done is to break listening down into a series of tools and skills you can use which enable you to interpret what the other person says so that you get clear understanding because once I can make you believe I understand you, you'll give me permission to influence you. Do you think one of the problems is, with, particularly in the commercial world, that we're so busy doing things that we don't actually take the time to listen properly and don't realise how important it can be? I think the problem comes is that, um, especially in the commercial world, is that people realise they've got a good product and they've got a brilliant product, but when they come to sell it, they sell it to themselves. I know this is a good product, therefore I'm going to show you how good a product it is. And actually, it doesn't matter how good a product I think it is, it matters whether I can sell it to you. And in order to sell it to you, I must understand you. Because different people have different wants and different needs. Uh, you may be dealing with someone who wants to make a lot of money, okay, then I can sell it through, this will make you a lot of money. You may be dealing with someone who wants to leave a legacy, so then you sell them to, okay, I'm going to leave for a legacy. And, and, and it's that, you know, maybe someone who wants to I don't know, look after their family. Right, I'm going to sell it through, this will have a, maybe enable you to look after your family. And you've got to work that person out. And we, we spend a lot of time working out our product, we spend a lot of time about talking, and we talk to speak and we talk to do everything else, but what we're not talk to do is to listen to the person that you're talking to. How easy was it for you to make the transition between doing what, what was literally life and death scenarios using your skills to actually trying to put it in a commercial context? Well, it's, it's, um, at the beginning it was difficult because I thought when I first left the police I had very little to offer business world. I didn't know the business world, I'd come from the public sector, went into the private sector and all of a sudden you're faced with a, a completely different mindset I suppose. There's much more of a can-do policy, let's try it, let's go for it, etc. in, in the, in the uh, private sector. And, but then as I got, as I started teaching people, you realise actually, they, our job, my job and your job, same job. Uh, you're interviewing me now, you're trying to work out, you're trying to come up with the right questions to make this interview useful. Okay, I'm talking to, a, to somebody, a suspect, I'm talking to someone on a bridge, I'm trying to work out the right questions to ask you in order that I can learn certain things. 
So where in sales they call it prospecting or filling in the discovery map. For me it's an investigation and everything's an investigation. If you're doing research into a degree, it's an investigation. Um, when they say to me, well we're dealing with awkward people, I said I was a police officer for 30 years. You don't deal with nice people. Well, you do deal with nice people, but you know, only when be, something's gone wrong. So, little people won't talk to you. Hmm, okay, well, guess what? When I was a police officer, the first thing you say to them, don't talk to me. So, you know, it's kind of like, where's the problems? And I'm constantly amazed at the, the similarities between us and the business world. It's not the differences, it's the similarities. I guess in business, though, people do say, if you're brave, you're allowed to fail. In your previous life, and, mm. and I don't mean being facetious by this, did you learn from maybe failures where the outcome wasn't what you wanted it to be, where somebody did jump or somebody did die? It's, uh, you learn from everything. I think one of the things in, with hostage negotiation, which was very powerful, is that we always reviewed success. And I think in the business world, and, and certainly in the political world, we tend to review failure. So we have public inquiries into failures. In the, in the hostage world, in our world, we reviewed success. So we saw what we were doing well. And instead of being instinctive, I always say um, you can be instinctive once, it should become best practice the second time. If it works well, make it work. You know, if it doesn't work well, then let's look at it. But the problem with communication, I think, where again people make mistakes, is there's no formula. There is no formula for communication because you and I are different people. And you on a good day will have this conversation. You on a bad day may not have this conversation. And so I have to approach you from how I see you now, not from how I might see you. You know, oh, this person's an egotist. Yeah, okay. Or this person's. Uh, you know, likes to be very gregarious and very noisy. Well, I'm in my cave today, so deal with me in my cave. You know what I mean? Finally, okay. you were talking to a, an audience today, and we know what modern life's like. People are on the phones all the time, they're on the tablets all the time. How do you get them to realise that listening is critical, not only in everyday life, but also in business? Well, I challenge them. Right at the very beginning of, this, of the talk, I do what I did to you, really, and say to you, teach me to listen. And so, and they came out with the normal stuff around eye contact and all of that stuff, which actually has nothing to do with listening. So, and I think that makes them sit up and take notice because they're saying, hang on a second. See, this is nonsense. It's talked about 7% of communication in the word spoken, 38% in the tone of voice, 55% in body language. Well, that can't be true, but everyone accepts it. It's become an acceptance. It's just not true. Because if I'm talking to you on the end of a telephone, 55% of communication apparently is just gone. And what I also say is, okay, now watch TV tonight. Turn off the volume. You tell me what they're talking about. You can see them. So that's just not true. And I think once people get that, and once people get that kind of that edge, and they think, actually, you know, this makes sense, it makes them sit up and pay attention. Richard, I'm not just saying this, it has been <laughs> genuinely fascinating listening to what you're saying. I'm sure a lot of people will get out an awful lot from, from what you've been able to say from your expertise. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Great to meet you. And of course, you can find out more about Richard from his own website, it's Richard Mullinder. And also, if you want to join in our conversation and listen to what we're saying and listen to what we've been talking about, then it's hashtag AWEurope.